The last time we worked with Zalman on a review ended with the company attempting to purchase ads from us in exchange for taking down the review. That was for the company Zalman R1 case, which we published in 2015 and which, by the way, remains available online. We later published a piece called The Slimy Underside of the Hardware Industry, which uh, had some unnamed companies in it. But anyway, that was all just six months after Zalman defaulted on a 3 billion won loan and had its export and accounting documents allegedly forged by its parent company, done to fake higher profits than reality and to receive large bank loans. That phone call we received was also right around the time that Zalman's former parent company, Manwal, had its CEO sentenced to a then record setting 23 years in prison in Korea for defrauding banks for loans. The parent company owed over $31 million in damages, folded, and left Zalman unsupervised to try and fix its reputation. Zalman apparently thought that the best way to do that was to offer a $500 ad purchase in exchange for taking down a review. So we swore them off and never worked with them again. And that review remains live to this day. In the time since, Zalman has apparently changed ownership. It's apparently changed PR and marketing people and we're willing to give them another shot. So we purchased the CNPS 20X from Amazon for $100. This is their new tower cooler, and uh, it's in the long-standing CNPS line from Zalman. So we're going to be benchmarking this today against other big air coolers and liquid coolers to see if the company has righted any of its wrongs. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and our Patreon page. Aside from the GN store, one of the best ways to support our high expenditure on testing quality and equipment is to join our Patreon page. We've been posting weekly behind the scenes videos lately to update our backers on developments at GN. You can gain access to our Patreon Discord, videos featuring other team members, and patrons ask GN videos at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. The funding has been going straight into maintaining our testing quality. Learn more at the link in the description below. The last time Zalman emailed us was in 2019, and at the time, it was after a lot of changes apparently in the company. They asked us if we would work with them again on reviewing a product, and we gave them an extremely firm, uh, no, screw off. And later we learned that the company had gone through a complete restructuring. So it's hard to, actually it's impossible to ignore Zalman's past history, and we won't even try, because the company was one of the shadiest, slimiest possible companies to work with in the industry at the time. I mean, look at their legal history. Their parent company was dragged through the court system to sort of prove all that. So anyway, they've gone through some changes. We'll see if they've actually recouped things today. This is the CNPS 20X. We've got a lot of thermal testing on this one today. We ran it through our whole normal suite, including the new CPU testing methodology we have for coolers. So if you want to learn more about how we test CPU coolers, you can check our previous review uh, videos or our article on CPU cooler testing methodology. We're just going to do the numbers today. In addition to talking about the marketing and the installation process of this cooler, just like we did recently for the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, which will be included in these benchmark charts as well. If you try to research the Zalman CNPS 20X, you might search for something like, quote, Zalman CNPS 20X on Google which brings you to a helpful not found page. You might next try to go to zalman.com en, click on CPU coolers, and then click on the CNPS 20X. But you'd be a fool for doing so because that link is also broken. Eventually, we found our way over to the page for the new cooler and read through the marketing. This cooler's primary feature is its inclusion of copper colored fins in the center, more for marketing than anything. And its next most prominent feature is the fan design. We're not 100% sure if those fins are copper because they don't mention it explicitly on the marketing page, but they at least look that way. So it seems reasonable that that'd be a marketing push. The company claims that the cooler uses, quote, reverse direct touch heat pipes, also known as nickel plated cold plates, which makes extraordinary claims of a, quote, 20x increase in cooling performance. Zalman also decided to break the laws of physics by creating a fin stack, which is somehow both, quote, four dimensional and stereoscopic simultaneously, which we're pretty sure makes it actually eight dimensional since stereoscopic is the amalgamation of two images and two times four is eight. The 4D stereoscopic corrugated cooling fin aluminum heatsink might sound like a strain of words that was on a dartboard and pushed together, but actually it means something really important for the product. What it means is, what it means is, hmm. Moving on, the next marketing point pertains to Zalman's fans, which it says, quote, minimize vibration and noise by implementing biomimetics, 
showing that Zalman's marketing team dove just as deep into the thesaurus as Manuel did into other people's pockets. Biomimetic is defined as, quote, relating to or denoting synthetic methods which mimic biochemical processes, which Zalman applies to its fans. Zalman says that it, quote, applied biomimetic technology with the motif of spider legs, claiming that the large amount of plastic obstructing the intake and the lack of a frame is used to minimize vibration. We'll test that in our benchmark today as well. Finally, we'd be remiss to leave out the emphasis on LEDs. Zalman says it best, claiming, quote, RGB LEDs utilizing the straightness characteristic of LEDs are placed in the housing to realize a distinctive LED pattern. Our testing uses a standardized thermal paste for fairness and accuracy, but Zalman also includes a tube of thermal paste that it markets to be, quote, a superconductor. But we'd assume not that kind of superconductor. Either way, Zalman's chart is confidence-inspiring because its scale starts at 14 and ends at 27 degrees, and each line on the chart is a 1 degree increase, causing a delta of 1 degree Celsius to look ginormous. Although Zalman's marketing might look overly complicated for the product, the only thing that's more complicated for it is the needlessly complex installation procedure for the CNPS 20X. The Zalman CNPS 20X requires 26 individual pieces of hardware to install to the motherboard. So it is one of the most, uh, again, needlessly complex installation procedures we've ever worked with. The backplate is, well, piece number one, first of all. The backplate is custom. You can't use the AM4 backplate with AM4 boards. It requires four standoffs to be passed through it, each of which needs to be capped with its own plastic housing to hold the screw in place. Once this is done, a piece of rubber has to be installed on the backplate to prevent it from creating a potential direct short on the back of the motherboard. The next step is to install four washers on top of the motherboard, then four screws, then two supports, then four screw caps, then the cooler, then two spring-mounted tension screws, and then you're mostly done other than wiring up the fans. This is, again, the most convoluted solution possible for a simple air cooler. Fortunately, you only typically have to install a cooler once, so it's only going to be inconvenient and annoying one time. That doesn't make the design less bad, but it certainly means it has less of an impact on the overall review. What we really care about is going to be the performance. The first test is our 35 dBA noise normalized test on the 3950X, which is about a 200 watt heat load. For this one, coolers are left completely stock, but the CPU and the bench are controlled heavily. This includes the stock original fans on the cooler, except they have their noise level adjusted to meet a uniform 35 dBA across all tested coolers. The system is completely controlled for all voltages, frequencies, and other parameters, as is ambient temperature and the room. Between the 35 dBA test, the 100% speed tests, and the two CPUs we tested on, and the auto tests we did, the Zalman cooler has undergone about 26 test passes, one for each piece of mounting hardware to install the cooler. Here's the first chart. For this one, the Zalman CNPS 20X at 35 dBA matched the performance of Noctua's NHD15. The two coolers are within one degree of each other, and that's within our one degree of error. The Zalman unit, in spite of all of its marketing trying to make it sound questionable, is actually not bad from a pure CPU cooling performance standpoint. It's not able to break away from the rest of the large air coolers, but it's not also getting dragged along the ground like the Corsair A500, which is overly expensive for its relative performance and also loud when it's maxed out. The Liquid Freezer 2 is our chart topper here at 52 degrees and posts a five degree advantage over the CNPS 20X or the NHD15 at a similar price to both. So far, the CNPS 20X is doing okay. It's not some miraculous cooler that leads the pack, but it's also not a meme. At least, well, not for this reason, maybe for the marketing reasons. Next chart. This one shows the VRM thermals for the same test. Remember that this is a cooler benchmark, not a motherboard benchmark, so our goal is to determine how much the cooler influences airflow around the VRM. Liquid coolers are mounted to the side of the bench at approximately the same distance as a top-mounted liquid cooler would be in a case, and so they're advantaged here. We care more about the comparison between big air coolers. The Liquid Freezer 2, just as a note, is an unsurprising chart topper, given that it has a VRM fan dedicated to this purpose. The Noctua NHD15 is the next best performer at 37 degrees, 41 degrees, and 36.6 degrees for our three points of VRM measurement. The Zalman CNPS 20X has roughly the same VRM2 measurement reading at 35.1, but manages at 9 degrees warmer on VRM1 than the 
NHD15 and about 5.5 degrees higher on VRM0 measurement. None of these numbers are in an objective sense bad since most VRMs will be far away from overheating like this one is and a couple degrees won't typically dictate whether a VRM overheats or doesn't. It might just prolong another 30 seconds to a minute how long it takes. A 9 degree difference is comparatively starting to get a large difference but uh, the VRM is still far away from being a problem area. Either way, it's the result of airflow that's more limited in the lower levels of the cooler, as opposed to the D15, where we've got some additional airflow at the lower end, just below the fin stack, and that's why it's got a 9 degree advantage for Noctua. The next test is for cold plate levelness, measured in microns from a known calibrated zero point. This is the test that more or less sank the Corsair A500 and was identified as its weak point. The Zalman CNPS-20X ends up about where the average is. It's not terrible, which makes sense, given its performance that was about tied with other big air coolers, and it's also not as good as the Deepcool Assassin 3's extreme levelness. The median is about 11 microns for the Zalman cooler, whereas the median for the NHD-15 is about 7.5. The NHD-15's max value is about 27, as compared to the CNPS-20X's 20 microns. The next test is for the 100% fan speed benchmark on the 3950X. This is more useful if you plan to plug the cooler in, let it go to max speed, and leave it alone. This test allows the fans to run as fast as they can, which means we're no longer controlled at an equal noise level. Anything with louder fans will generally increase in rank, but some are disproportionately loud to the outcome. A dichotomous example of this would be the EVGA CLC360 juxtaposed with the Corsair A500. The A500 runs at 51.1 dBA, but roughly matches the performance of the 43.9 dBA Noctua NHD15. The EVGA CLC360 wins in a technical sense, but is absolutely unbearable at 60.4 dBA when left to full fan speeds. Zalman's CNPS20X runs about 54.4 degrees over ambient, putting it alongside the Assassin 3, which runs at an equal noise level and about the same thermal performance. It's alongside the D15 as well, which is one degree warmer, but at a lower noise level. The liquid coolers, somewhat unsurprisingly, are allowed to run away with the game. The liquid freezer 2 manages 50.9 degrees at a lower noise level than the big air coolers, managing 54 degrees for those. The next chart shows the time required to reach steady state, or equilibrium, helping illustrate how quickly a cooler reaches its sustained temperature during a torture workload. The liquid coolers can go about 5 minutes before max, while the air coolers all cluster around 90 to 100 seconds, at least so far. The Zalman CNPS-20X is outdoing the NHD-15 and Assassin 3 by about 10 seconds here. That's not a massive gain, it's 10 seconds. It's not like this is an abstract measurement, that's just time. But it is a noteworthy and a measurable one, and it's advantaged here. We'll cap it there for the benchmarks. A couple more things about this. So on the positive side, the performance is actually, it's about average. Not in a negative way, it's just, it's about where the other large air coolers are. It's within one degree of the Noctua and HD 15, which is within our acceptable error, error and variance. Uh, it leans towards being a bit better than the D15, but not more than one degree Celsius. And even that begins to be a bit, bit questionable. So what we can definitively say is it is approximately the same as the NHD 15. And even if it's objectively better by one degree, you're talking one degree. The Assassin 3 is another cooler that is Actually, we like it in terms of air cooling performance. It's good. Uh, but it's another one where they had some lies, like just straight up lies in their marketing. Not even just over marketing or misrepresenting, but just literally lying about the product. We have a whole video on that. Now, uh, the Assassin 3 is still a good cooler. And so, you know, that they fixed their marketing materials on websites. It's gotten back to being accurately represented today at least. So anyway, the marketing is one thing and unfortunately Zalman, much like Deepcool, is making its product look stupid with marketing that is just overly bombastic and making things up too much. So uh, the cooler is objectively average and if you really like the way it looks or something and you don't mind the, the noise testing, the thermals are about where you want it, and you prefer how this looks over the D15 and the Assassin 3, and you don't want a liquid cooler, then it's fine. And you shouldn't really, in terms of performance, feel bad about buying it. So Zalman has marketing they should probably tone down because it's making their product look silly. 
but a product which is actually okay. Uh, and maybe the company's turned around on the not being quite so slimy side of things, but time will tell about that. We obviously still have a tainted relationship with them because uh, can you blame us? Anyone would if you've gone through basically uh, being offered money to take down a review is like the biggest possible violation of our ethics. And so that offended us greatly and we never worked with them again. And it took this long to come back to trying it out. Time will tell if Zalman has moved on from that, but the product is okay. Couple more things to mention about it. The fan mount, we actually do really like. So it's kind of a brilliant fan mount system. It's really simple mechanically. It's something anyone could do if they wanted to, but they do a, have a much cleaner mount than some of the other companies with bigger coolers. Noctua is included, it's not that great really. And the Assassin 3 is also not great. So they've done well with the fan mount. It's two brackets that hook in with much more security than the others. So we did like that. Downside to mention is there is some vibrational noise and sort of like a resonant hum in the fin stack with the fans at higher speeds or at certain RPMs anyway. And uh, it almost sounds similar to a fan lightly clipping a cable, which is not what was happening here, but it's, it's a slight resonant vibrational noise and it's annoying at the higher RPMs. We don't know whether it's a unit to unit thing or whether you just need to run it at a, an RPM that's different than where it had like slightly lower, but that was one of the downsides to note on the noise front. At $100 then, it's about the same place as every other large air cooler on the market. Most of them are in the 90 to 100 range. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 is objectively superior by five, six degrees, depending on the test, and uh, is, it's got the benefit of VRM cooling, which depending on what you're doing might not really matter. It's liquid, some people don't like that, but if you want something that's just objectively better and you don't mind liquid, it's the same price, you should buy that versus pretty much any of these as long as it fits in the case. If you don't like liquid, and we discuss the ups and downs of it in other videos, then your choice is Assassin 3, D15, uh, or this. Just buy whichever one you think looks the best. This is a pain in the ass to install, and it's got some other small issues, but you know, product's fine. So that's it for this one. Hopefully Zalman can stick with uh, making reasonable products, break, tone down the marketing, and not be incredibly slimy and uh, you know having a parent company that does illegal things again, they'd be in a much better spot. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on them and try more stuff that they make if they can stick to a new philosophy of acting legally. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. We bought this ourselves, so if you want to help fund our testing on things like this, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick up shirts, a mod mat, whatever you like, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus where we've got some extra videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.